Add in a code day three solved with SQL. Uh, this one was quite a bit harder in SQL than day two, especially part two. Um, but uh, I was able to do it. So day three, um, we're looking for two values, a gamma rate and epsilon rate. We're given an inputs, uh, a set of inputs that look like binary. Um, and the gamma rate is just the number uh, created with the most common bits uh, in each column. And the epsilon rate is the least common bit in each column. So uh, if there's more ones than zeros in a column, you know, it's one uh, and vice versa. And then you just multiply them together to get the answer. So here's what I did for part one of day three. Uh, I'm not going to go over this uh, anymore for each day, but uh, I created a schema, created a table for my inputs, uh, and then copied the data directly into it. It's really simple today because it's a single column. Um, I copied them in as text, um, which we're going to have to manipulate in order to get our answer later. Um, and then here's the result that I ended up doing, but I'm going to go over that live in the console. Okay, so I have my inputs directly in uh, the table from their raw values. Um, and the first thing I wanted to do to find the most significant bit, um, the easiest thing that I thought I could do was break each of these values into its own separate row and keep track of where it was. Um, so there's a few ways to do this, and I want to walk through the approach that I took. So the first thing I needed to do was split these up into individual um, characters. So to do that, I use this function uh, regex split to array. And if you give that a string, let's say the first one, and we're splitting by nothing, then it splits that into an array. Uh, but I want each of those as a row. So the next thing I did was wrap that in unnest. And that turns each value into a row. And the last thing I want is to know uh, the index. So I want to know this was character one, character two, character three, et cetera. Um, and for that, uh, I actually learned a new Postgres feature that if you use unnest in a from part, you could add with ordinality and get that. So let's do that now. Okay, so this is what the query ends up looking like. So it looks more complicated, but uh, I'll go through it. So we're selecting the ID character and index from our inputs. So from our inputs, we get the ID. And then we're doing a lateral join. Um, we have to do a lateral join because we reference the value of the current row in here. So we're doing a lateral join. Those are really cool uh, to look up. Um, and then we do what I just did in the previous example. So we're getting each of those rows that we're joining with. And then this is where, this is the new feature I didn't know about. That's really cool. If you do an unnest, um, then do with ordinality uh, then you could get the index from it. So we're not just getting the character, we're also getting the index. And if I run that, you can see that I get um, for the first input, it's 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, and I also get its position in the string, and I've created a new table with all of that. Now that I have that table, I want to find the most common uh, value by index. And there is a really simple way to do that. So here's how you, we do it. Um, this is the, the query we just did, so don't be overwhelmed by the CTE. Then the, here's a new query. So given that we now have broken up the characters into that table, um, we can now just select uh, grouping by index. So we want the aggregate by index 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the mode uh, within that group. Uh, this is something I've rarely used, but uh, is really cool that you could do mode within group and then the group, so just the characters. Um, and that gives me the most significant bit, 10110. Now the last thing I did, now I have sort of an answer here of 10110. Um, now the question is how do I actually convert that one to, uh, to decimal? And to do that, uh, I padded it. So I took that string, let's say it's 10110. And I padded it with 30 uh, to a length of 32 with zeros. And the reason I did that is that creates an equivalent binary number, uh, but make it so the length is predictable. And using that, I can now say that's a 32-bit number and convert it to decimal. And so that would be our answer for gamma. And then to get epsilon, uh, instead of calculating the least significant bit, I realized that 
the least significant bit will just be the flipped bit in all the inputs. Um, so all I wanted to do was invert the binary. And so to do that, what I did instead was pad it with ones so that it flips to a correct number. Um, we'll do this one at a time so you can see it happen. Pad it with ones. Uh, and then what I did with that was I inverted it. Okay, so I inverted the number and that gives us our inverted number. And if I convert that to an int, then that is our epsilon. Bringing it all together, uh, I was able to do this, break down the, break down the characters uh, into their individual indexes, find the most common bit by index. And then this is just taking that result and doing what I just said, which is uh, padding it with zeros to get the gamma, uh, padding it with ones, inverting it, uh, and then converting to decimal to get the epsilon, and then multiplying them together to get the answer. Then for part two, we now need to calculate uh, two more uh, values, uh, which is the oxygen rating and the CO2 rating. Uh, and the way we do this is sort of an iterative uh, or recursive search. So it's a bit complicated going through here. I think the examples are best, but we start with all numbers, find the most common bit like we did the last time, but now we just use that to filter into the next set of numbers. So if the most common bit's one, then we only take the value uh, where they start with one. And then given those, what's the most common bit? And the most common bit is zero. So then of those seven, we take the ones that start with one zero, and then we keep going until there's only one number left. Uh, and then that is our oxygen generator rating. And we do the same process, but with the least common bit, uh, and that is our CO2 rating. And they give us some instructions for what to do if there's equal number of bits in both positions and such. Um, I tried really hard for about 20 minutes to do this in a single statement, like I have every other problem, and I couldn't do it. So I had to break, I broke down for this one and actually wrote a Postgres function. So here's my solution. Uh, the top is the same. And then we create a temporary table, which is the same as part one. In this case, we're doing that same breakdown to get the ID character and index into a characters table. And then here's where I broke down and actually created a SQL function to do the rest. Um, so I will talk through the SQL function right now and then uh, show it running later. So I created the SQL function decode. It takes an accumulator, which you start out empty, and it takes whether you want the most common next character or least common using a Boolean. So we could use this for both the oxygen and CO2 rating. Um, I declare two variables and an array of integers and uh, the next common thing, which is text. Uh, and the first thing I do is find all of the inputs that we actually care about because we only care about uh, the inputs that start with our accumulator. So I just select from the inputs where the character length of uh, our value is at least uh, as long as the accumulator plus one and that it starts with the accumulator. So this is just finding if we start with one zero, we want to start find everything else that starts with one zero, but is at least longer. If we didn't find anything, then we are done. We've uh, finished our results. Uh, and we find if we have exactly one result, we're also done. These are both just directly out of the problem description. Okay, next, now that we have uh, the IDs that we care about and our characters temporary table, this is again, similar to that last uh, part one, we select the most common character uh, within the characters where the index is uh, the current length of our accumulator plus one. So if we start from zero, we're finding the first character. And then once we find the first character, we're finding the second, third. So this is how we're iterating here. Uh, and we're only looking at the characters who are part of the strings that are in the set of IDs that we just previously calculated. And then we're storing that into storing the result into our common uh, value. And strict ensures that we get a value, it's exactly one value into here. The one important detail here is the descending. So this is part of the problem. Uh, we didn't do this in part one, but this is part of the uh, problem description where if there's equal numbers of zeros and ones, uh, you pick one for most, most significant, modes finding uh, most common. So, uh, the, the documentation for Postgres says that when mode has an equal number of values, it just takes the first one. 
Um, and since there's an ordering as part of this, the first one, we want it to be one. So if we order it descending, ones will always be before zero. So mode will always return a one in conflict. So that's a really important detail here. Uh, this is so that we could run the function across both uh, most common and least common. There has to be a better way to do this, but I time box myself and I was running out of time. So I just did it this verbose way. So if we don't care about the most common, which is what we already found, then we just flip one to zero, zero to one. Um, there's probably like a one liner to do that easily, but uh, I just didn't think of it on the fly. And then finally, uh, we return by recursing. So we return the value by recursing where the accumulator now is our current accumulator concatenated with our next common value and then whether we're looking for most or least common. And then finally, the results. So we I broke this down again using CTEs. I think while it makes it look more complicated, I think it makes it uh, more readable once you understand that I'm just creating these sort of temporary tables here. So creating the CTE strings I'm just grabbing the oxygen and CO2 rating by calling our function with both most common and least common for oxygen and CO2. That gives us our string results. Then I'm converting those string binary strings into decimals values by doing the padding technique we did in part one. I don't need to do any bit flipping anymore, so they're both padded with zero, just converting them to integers, and I get oxygen decimal, CO2 decimal. And then finally, I'm getting the final results where I want to show you everything, oxygen, CO2, the decimal values, and then multiplying them together to get the answer. And if we run all of this together, uh, you can see we get the oxygen, the CO2, the oxygen decimal, the CO2 decimal, and then the answer.